In this lecture, we are going to see the objective of testing. Let's have a look into the first objective of this syllabus. Just remember, you need to know this objective as it is, as question will come directly from this topic since it is marked as K1. Before we jump to the objectives, you must know these important terms which we are going to use in this lecture. We should know what is the meaning of work product and test items. Work product means output. Let's understand this. These are the steps followed during development of software in an organization. First step is to get user's requirement. Then we develop system requirement. Then comes the global design. Next is detailed design. And last step is implementation where software is developed. So when we say work product in the system requirement stage, the output is system requirement. So system requirement will become our work product. Similarly, in the global design and detailed design stage, the output is design document. So our work product will be design document. And in the implementation stage, the output is code or software. So then the work product will be code here. So we have to keep in mind work product means output. Now the next term is test item, which is also known as test object. It is any document or component or system which is under test. Let's see an example to understand this. In the requirement stage, requirement is our work product. And if this has to be reviewed, then requirement is referred as test item. Similarly, if we are in implementation stage, the output of this stage is code. And if we want to perform testing on it, then code is our test item here. So output of the stage is called work product and if testing is performed on it, then it is called as test item. So what we can say here is any document or component or system which is under test is referred as test item. So this is the first objective to evaluate work products such as requirement, user stories, design and code. We already know work product means output and the output of requirement stage is requirement document where all the requirements are mentioned. Now as per the first objective, we need to evaluate this work product. So let's see an example to understand this. Suppose this is the customer requirement. For web page, when the login details are given, the next page shall load in few milliseconds. And if login details are not correct, then show a pop-up. But if you look this requirement carefully, then you will find that this is not complete. There are some open points. For an example, how much time? They have mentioned few milliseconds, but the timing should be specific here, which is not. So this is an open point for us. Second point is, which page will load next? This is also not given. They are saying next page shall load, but what will be the content of that page? That is not mentioned. And the third open point is what is the pop-up content? They are saying the pop-up should appear, but what will be the content of that pop-up is not mentioned here. So this requirement is not complete. And therefore, these are the questions which we need to clarify. So this is why it is necessary to evaluate work products such as requirement, user stories, design and code. Now, the second objective states to verify whether all specified requirements have been fulfilled. Let's try to understand this. We already know this requirement. Now, we need to see if these requirements are fulfilled in the engineering requirement. After analyzing the customer requirement and asking question, we finally have the engineering requirement, which includes the following points. Login is correct. Go to the next page. Next page shall load in 500 millisecond. Next page shall contain the personal information. If the login detail is not correct, pop-up shall appear. And the pop-up message is password or user ID is incorrect. So now you can see by asking question, 
we got all the missing information which we included in the engineering requirement. So like this, in each stage, we have to verify whether all specified requirements have been fulfilled or not. Now third objective is to validate whether the test object is complete and works as the user and other stakeholders expect. As we know, test object means object under test and it is defined as the component or system to be tested. So when we are in the requirement stage, requirement is our test object. When we are in the design stage, design is our test object. And when we are in the implementation stage, code is our test object. Now let's continue with our example. As per third objective, we need to provide input to the test object and check the output if it fulfills the stakeholders requirement or not. This means once the software is ready, we need to execute it to see if it fulfills the customer requirement. And since we are executing the code here, this comes under validation. So third objective is to validate whether the test object is complete and works as user and other stakeholders expect. The fourth objective is to build confidence in the level of quality of the test object. Let's understand this. Suppose we are in the requirement stage, then requirement is our test object. And if we clarify all our requirements in this stage itself, instead of clarifying it during the implementation stage, then we can build confidence in our requirement and finally in our product. Because if we clarify requirement during the implementation stage and if we find any mistake, then all the previous documents requires a change and doing that will be a costly process. And that is why it is necessary to build confidence in the level of quality of the test object. Now let's discuss objective 5 and 6 together. Objective 5 is to prevent defects and objective 6 is to find failures and defects. Let's understand this objective. If you find defect in the requirement stage, you prevent this defect to go to the next stage. Now objective 6 into comes into picture. We need to find the defect or failure in the same stage in which they are tested. Otherwise defect will travel to the next stage and it will be more costly to fix. And this is the reason this is one of the important objective of testing to prevent defect and to find failure and defects. The seventh objective is to provide sufficient information to stakeholder to allow them to make informed decision especially regarding the level of quality of the test object. So when we find defect, it's not necessary that we will fix all of it before release. But what we can do is to provide sufficient information to the stakeholder so that they can take decision based on the defect and risk associated with it. Now, the eighth objective is to reduce the level of risk of inadequate software quality, that is, previously undetected failure occurring in operation. The objective is related to fifth and sixth objective. We need to find the defect in the same stage in which they are introduced, otherwise it will be found in the operation. If fault is found during operation, it can have adverse effect, and that is why it is necessary to reduce the level of risk of inadequate software quality. The ninth objective is to comply with contractual, legal or regulatory requirement or standards to verify the test object's compliance with such requirement or standard. Sometimes you need to fulfill the legal requirements. For an example, if you are working for automotive industry, then you need to fulfill ISO 26262 standard for safety critical requirements. Same goes with the contractual requirement. If you have made any contract with the customer, then during testing you have to see whether you have fulfilled those requirements or not. And that is why this objective come into picture. To comply with contractual, legal or regulatory requirements or standards to verify test objects compliance with such requirement or standards. Till now, 
we discussed general testing objectives whereas the objectives are context dependent to understand this let's have a look into two different testing levels component level and acceptance level when you perform testing at component level, your objective is to find as many defects as possible so that they are not found during operational use. Whereas, if you are in the acceptance level, your objective is to check if system works as per the customer's requirement. So that is all you need to check here. Before we end this lecture, let's have a look into the important points. So you need to remember all the points the way it is written here. First objective is to evaluate work products such as requirement, user story, design and code. Second objective is to verify whether all specific requirements have been fulfilled. Third objective is to validate whether the test object is complete and works as the user and other stakeholders expect. Fourth objective is to build confidence in the level of quality of the test object. Fifth objective is to prevent defects. Sixth objective is to find failures and defects. Seventh objective is to provide sufficient information to stakeholders to allow them to make informed decision especially regarding the level of quality of the test object. Eighth objective is to reduce the level of risk of inadequate software quality. Example, previously undetected failures occurring in operation. Ninth objective is to comply with contractual, legal or regulatory requirements or standards to verify the test object's compliance with such requirement or standard. And at the end we need to know objective of testing is context dependent. Thank you.